Love Talk Radio. Hello, everybody out there in inner space and outer space and the world wide web. This is the uh, Girl George and the Dragons radio show. I'm Girl George, and anybody I can drag on stage is the Dragons. So I guess that's you today for everybody that likes crazy, weird, bizarre over-the-edge acts, musicians and poets and artists and tattoo artists, and the the further out, the better. So today we have an old friend of mine that I know from the Missouri Lounge, and he does like rockabilly. He's a rockabilly recording artist. He's a singer-songwriter. His name is Johnny Fire. So here's Johnny. Hi, Johnny. How are you doing? How you doing, girl George? Good evening, Berkeley, California. Where are you at now? I'm in. T- I'm calling from Tallahassee, Florida. Florida. Is that where you're from? Uh yes. I was born in Tallahassee, actually. So I have some roots here. I actually just currently re- recording a project and just stepped out of the studio to do the interview. What's the name of your latest album? My latest album is called, entitled 15 Minutes, and it's a, it, you know it's we're we got about three more songs to uh, to put on it, and then it'll be finished. So make it make it in a 20 20 track album. Are you putting that song that we wrote together on it? That one about Johnny Cash. I would sure love to do that. You're talking about nine one one Johnny Cash. Song. It's a great I, I I have to talk to my uh my people and the engineer and see if we can squeeze it in, but that would be neat to to put it on there. I love your voice and that you got such a deep voice. You got a deep <laughs> voice. <laughs> Thank you. So how, so how are you? How long girl have George? you been playing? How long have you been playing, Johnny? I've been playing for over uh you you're talking rockabilly or alternative your whole country life. How over... long have you been playing guitar and singing? Oh, okay. Since age six, I'm, you know, I'm. I don't have to. I don't think I have to give my 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 age no, out right have now. No, you do age. <laughs> <laughs> Since age six, I started playing the violin, and from there I went to rock and roll. Being you know, pretty much self-taught, you know. So you played guitar. all over. You 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 played with uh, some of my old friends, uh, Billy. Billy Joe Shavers, an old friend of mine from Nashville. I've seen you play a concert with him. Yes, ma'am. Where yes, was ma'am. that at? It's a good friend of mine. I, well, actually, it's a little bit of a story to that. Uh, I actually first met Billy Joe Shaver when I was playing a gig in uh, Nashville, Tennessee at Tootsie's. Uh-huh. This must have been, I guess, oh, 2003, 2004. And I was first introduced to him. And not really, it's kind of a dark, the Orchard Lounge is kind of a dark bar back there. You can't really see faces too well. But my friend introduced me as that. This is Billy Joe Shaver, like to introduce you. And actually, he actually came up and shook my hand. And that was that. And I was able to make a connection there and ended up uh, doing a uh, opening up for him in Nashville, Tennessee at the uh, Duke's Fest in 2006. That's a Duke to the Hazard, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. It's a it's a festival that that they um, have for Dukes of Hazard fans and the people involved with that. Actually, Willie Nelson actually was there that evening too. So him and Jesse Coulter. Uh, it's quite a fun show. 
Yeah, I knew Waylon. I never met Jesse or, or Willie. I knew Waylon and Christopherson and Billy Swan. Have you met Billy Swan? Um, um, can you repeat that, George? Billy Swan. He, he used to play with Christopherson. No, I haven't. I have not met him yet. And you also played with the Blasters. That's that's from a whole different place. Yes, ma'am. Actually, uh, they're friends of mine. Um, uh, from Los, they're from Los Angeles. Uh, there was a contact there, um, John Baz and um, Phil Alvin, and uh, we did some shows together. And here in Tallahassee, uh, did a show with them, and actually. Got to um, open for them here. Sometimes we have to get some of these shows up on YouTube. Maybe I can talk to you about that. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be great. Who else have you played with? We've done quite a bit of um, performing. Uh, we main um, acts that um, come to come to my mind... It would be uh, Dexter Ron Weber of the Flat Duo Jets. We've um, done quite a quite a bit of uh, shows with uh, international artists, uh, but uh, as far as me performing with with my music uh, on my record, um, I I have uh, um, Doug Morgan on upright bass. We have uh, on the new record. Uh, we have him, and we also um, featured Christopher Carter from uh, a band from the '90s, Zombie Birdhouse. Um, we've um, I've uh, on drums. I've worked with Scott MacArthur from Tallahassee, Florida. I've worked with Donnie Crenshaw. Um, quite a few, quite a few um, popular um, people, especially in the punk rock and uh, alternative country uh, realm of, of folks as far as celebrities. do you have out all together? Uh, right now, there's currently, there's currently five, but there's one on cdbaby.com. Uh, you can backslash Johnny Fire, and you can order that one, and that's Southern Depression. That, that was the first record that I uh, released under my... Uh, Publishing company Johnny Fire Music with BMI. So on Facebook, your name is John Smith, right? Yes, ma'am. You should put it Johnny Fire so that they, they can find you. <laughs> well, we have it. They build, make you build a page on that, you know. And uh, oh, they I don't do let you Johnny put Johnny Fire. Fire as a name. I, ha- you know, I I tried, and uh, even I have a domain and showed them that too. It's just it seems to it seems to just make me have a page called Johnny Fire. So you can there's a page on Facebook, but uh, my website um, is JohnnyFire.com. That's up there as far as you can see on the front page, a booking contact and the um, my Yahoo mailing address. That's the well, best well, way they to book did. My Facebook band. did that to me too. They wouldn't let me put girl on G I R L, and right. so I put two R's in it. See if you spell it wrong, it goes right by. They have certain words that that they have plugged in there that they don't want you to use, like girl, like like madam, like fire. So if right. you spell it wrong, it slides right underneath. It slides right through. That's why well, my, just, my name is spelled G I R R L because it's spelled wrong well, and it, it went by. <laughs> well, that's took me a know, long time to figure that out. The, the 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 internet world has surely uh, changed the way people uh, go about doing uh, uh, you know business. Business. I, I'm always uh, you know one of the people like a common man. I just with a good handshake and look you square in the eye. You know that's that's who I am. But uh, Surely, as you know, actually, well, it's it's deceitful in a way. Some some of the uh, things they can get away with, but uh, my real name is actually John Smith. That's why it is John Smith there. And you can go on there and look through. Uh, John, you can see Johnny Fire. There's a page for me, and then you know, see the shows. I usually 
do pretty good with updating it on the new shows and new things that are, that are happening with the music project through that John Smith. It's just, it, but the site, facebook.com backslash Johnny Fire Music. That's J O H N N Y F I R E Music. That should pull me up. So if you want to contact with me through there, that's a good way to, to book the band, too. You know, I do a lot of work on. Are you going to go stuff. on tour after your album comes out? I sure am, I, and I'm planning on coming back out there soon. Probably oh, hit New out Orleans. To Berkeley? Yeah, I probably I'll go through New Orleans and Texas, and out to uh, Los Angeles, and then up to uh, Berkeley. Probably, probably, you know, it's a small little tour, just you know, to promote the record. That would be great to see you. It would be great to see you too. I I really <laughs> really appreciate this opportunity. To have me on here and on your show, you as being the legend you are, <laughs> and uh, maybe we can write some more songs together. Yeah, I'd lo- I'd love to do that, and uh, and you know I'd like to share with people how um, things work, especially at the Missouri Lounge. You, sh- you just never know who you're going to meet and be a- a- involved in a project, which ends up something being very cool sometimes. And um, it just being able to be out there in, in, uh, in Berkeley, California, California, doing doing my the music I do, and being who I am here, um, you know, I'm just a common man that writes songs about heartfelt struggles, and to be you know a southern gentleman in Berkeley, California, was a you know a dream come true for me. It was a life changing experience, and you know, I'll never uh, forget you guys. So. You know, pat yourself on the back, and you were part <laughs> you of the inspiration. You played a lot of places of... in San Francisco, too, up on Grant Avenue. That's my old stomping ground yeah. back in the 60s. I, I used to play, like, next door to where you were playing. I used to play at the yeah. Coffee Gallery, and then you played at the Grant Green, which is right next door. Yeah, we'd be, uh, so. that, that, that we'd played there. I actually played there in uh, um, New Year's um, show. Uh, one time, me and Doug, the upright bass player, flew out there. I played on gig out there and got to stay in this uh I think the the uh the our bass our guitar player's uh girlfriend had a mansion out there. It was like one of the ten million dollar mansions, beautiful home. So I was I was like, you know, this would be a town I'd love to live in one day when I you know, <laughs> you I would become rich at, rich at, rich at this, you know. <laughs> Make some damn money. You played live out in San street Francisco. Too, didn't, you? didn't you play a street fair while you were here in San Francisco? Yeah, done a few things there. Right at Golden Gate um, Park there, um, a rockabilly barbecue. Uh, we've um, we did a bunch of shows right in one like stretch there a week. That one at Mojitos. You, you know who that is, right? Yeah. Mojitos. We played that. Um, we played um, the Grant and Green again, and when I was, you know, that's when I. But that's in 2010, and when you, when I was out there, with you. I, I I like uh, playing uh, bars like that, especially when you can walk by on a sidewalk, look in the window, and see the band playing. Yeah, and that's that's the, that's a good location. Well, see, that's that's where the whole thing started. That's where the beatniks were. That's where Carrack and all them hang out. Was right next door to there, the coffee gallery, which is now an Irish pub. Which I don't know. Some, some it's an Irish pub. Is it's right next to Grant and Green? That's where it used to be, the coffee gallery, and that's where they used to have a stage, which ain't there no more. And uh, all, all the beatniks you. used to play there, and then then the hippies came in and did it there. Uh-huh. And that's where Janice first played, was right next door to there at the coffee gallery, which ain't there no more, so he didn't see it. Did, did you ever um, do any work with uh, Jimi Hendrix or Janice Joplin ever? In, um, I Janice met Joplin? her. I never worked with uh-huh. I met her from Chris Stoffelson, because Chris was a friend of mine. So right. she was a friend of Chris, and so I met her from Chris, but I, I never met Hendrix. I, I met uh, the Almond Brothers. I met Greg Almond. I was there when they got their tattoos. Because Lyle Tuttle, the tattoo artist, is a friend of mine. And when I came back from New York, after I left Nashville, I went to New York, and I came back to San Francisco in 71. And mm-hmm. he was tattooing all those uh, those armbands and mushrooms onto the Almond Brothers. 
So I met everyone well, except for, for Dwayne because Dwayne had died like about two months before. He died on my birthday in October, and I, I got back there in December. So I didn't meet Dwayne, but I met Greg and all the rest of them. You know, one show I was invited to when I was in California was uh, my friend George Clinton. Some of his people called me up, and they found out I was in uh, Berkeley, California, and they called me when I was in my apartment one night, and uh, and uh, he said, you know, come on down. We'll get you on the VIP list here. We're doing a P-Funk show. So I went down there. I got to, uh, got to see some of my friends. They actually are from Tallahassee. I work with George here in his studio and uh, Stevie B was the one that was performing that evening with another P Funk uh, offshoot. But uh, just George Clinton, Funkadelic uh, um, All Stars. Um, yeah, he's they, a legend. Uh, he's he, him they have out a of space men, boy, they were way before their time. Yeah, I'm good friend. I'm good friends with George here. I've known him since 2003. Here in Tallahassee, they have a studio off of. of um, well, I can't. I can't disclose that. I guess we're over the air right now. But <laughs> where are you from originally? Where's your family? I'm from? originally from Tallahassee, Florida, but I've been all. I've, I've I've lived all over. I've lived in Phoenix, Arizona. I've lived in Nashville, Tennessee. I've lived in California. I've lived in South Florida, and there's actually a studio down in South Florida that um, I work out of too. And that's it. You can go to that one. It's uh, go to theliveroom dot org. Theliveroom dot org, and you can also hear some of my uh, music um, that's on this new album, a song called "Broken in Your Wall." They've posted it up on their website to view, and um, you just go to artist when you get to theliveroom dot dot org, and click on to artist. And you can get a link what to the music What about your family? What did your father do? What kind of work did your father do? My father uh, recently passed away about two years ago, and uh, he was a dental prosthetic technician. Uh-huh. My mother is a school teacher, and she was also she's also an artist, a watercolor artist. Her name is Denise cool. Smith, and you can um, find some of her artwork on online, um, Art by Denise too, on MySpace. Uh, my uh, father, um, who recently passed away, his name was Harry Smith, H-A-R-R-Y, which is also my middle name. Um, you know, my parents always encouraged me with music and from the violin lessons to to rock and roll, you know. They definitely are um, appreciate the arts and, and what it has to offer and, uh, you know, the roots are where you're from. So where are you from, girl, George? Yeah, I was born in Alameda, moved to Oakland when I was a month old. So I'm from East Oakland on the on the second set of railroad tracks. <laughs> right, right, I remember born that. Born in the ghetto, honey. There's also like a dinner theater I used to play at there in Oakland, um, near there. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Several names. I think you've were, you've been there. Um, we did shows. I, I can't think of it right now. But oh, it's, you mean uh, the Star Club or the the the? It, I see. It's Starry Plow. Not the Story Plow. It's in. This is in Oakland. But Oakland. yeah, I played at the Story Plow. That's a nice place. Star too. Club is in Oakland, but it doesn't have food. I don't think. I used to work yeah, there. Yeah, remember we did a show at the Re- is it the Revolutionary Lounge? I remember that. Oh yeah, that was, I've been there. That was a good one. That's not um, that's not Oakland. That's that's something like Albany or out there. Right. So how's the weather in Berkeley right now? It's warm. It's like seventy seventy five degrees. While everywhere else was freezing across the the country, it was like seventy seventy five degrees here every day. It's like seventy five. That's beautiful, today. isn't it? That's, it's that's sunny. It feels like spring. It feels like <laughs> spring all the time. Everyone else is freezing to death. You, should, you guys should have come out here because it is warm. You could it, you it, could it, wear a swimming suit. And it's it's you know sometimes the temperature changes so bad. It's like in the twenties, twenty degrees, and then during the day it gets to like to sixty five and goes back down to the twenties. It's real unpredictable. 
But here, Until it's I really, heard it got, it's really, it got uh, to be different. under zero. It was cold there. <laughs> it was colder in Nashville than it was in, in uh, where Alaska, I heard. You know, on the Facebook, all of my friends are telling me, it's cold out here. <laughs> George, I've been meaning to ask you uh, your your Nashville connections. Um, who exactly do you know there in Nashville? I, oh, I've never I, really I asked you that. I went to Nashville in, in 1971. Well, we met Chris Christopherson at the Coffee Gallery, me and Star. It was George and Arizona Star. And we were playing at the Coffee Gallery, and Bobby Noors, which is Bobby Dillon's road manager, brought Chris Johnson in to see us play. And we'd never heard of him, you know, but he was cute. <laughs> So anyway, he came wow. to see us play. He thought we were the funniest things he ever seen. So he's dragging us all over Berkeley to all these clubs where the Iron Butterfly is playing and throwing us up on stage because they knew who he was, even though we didn't, and, and saying, oh, we were going to, this was going to be the next big thing. And we'd get up there and break all our strings because we were a bunch of fuck-ups, you know. <laughs> Me and my guitar player, all of our strings would break. We'd fuck up like shit. <laughs> but, but anyway, he, he believed in us. He thought we were great. So anyway... uh uh, a year later, that was 1970, and that's when I met Janice, was the first time I met him. But anyway, a year later, you know, I'd seen a, a book that had Chris Thompson in this book about Nashville and the outlaws in Nashville. So I picked it up, and I read this story about Shelby Singleton, which owned Sun Records then. And it said, if, if there was talent and he could sell it, he would sell it. So I wrote him this stupid letter that said, "Oh, you you should you should sign us up because cause we're the hottest thing you ever seen." And so he called me up. He called me up three days after I sent it and said, "Well, if you can be here in Nashville in three days, I'll, I'll see you play." So I called up Star. I said, "We got to go to Nashville." So Nashville, I mean Star, she wrote a, a bum check. And, and me and her and our piano player Jeff Ross, we flew to to Nashville on a bum check and then when we got there we had no money <laughs> so we're hitchhiking in, in town we're going to go to the Ramada Inn because that's where, where uh, Johnny Cash was had a show at, at the Ramada Inn and so we went to the coffee shop at the Ramada Inn and we're hitchhiking and Farrah and Young picked us up hitchhiking and, and we told him our story and, and he gave us $20 he said here get some coffee you know, he, he says I've been where you guys are at He's, good luck you know and so we went to to the coffee shop there, and, and we ran into Sh- Shel Silverstein, and we didn't know who he was, of course. And of course, I got in the fight with Shel right off. And, and then, so anyhow, the next next day we went and we see Shelby Singleton, and he says, "I don't know what to tell you. You guys are very visual, and, and video is the next thing that's going to be in." He thought video disc were going to be the next big thing, you know, where you put on a video disc this great big record that had video for songs. He thought that was going to be the next thing. He says, when video comes in, you guys are going to be the biggest thing going, but it's not going to be here for a while, so I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) I have. um, But you better start writing your own songs, because you can't do covers. We were doing, you know, Beatles and Stone and stuff, so we started writing our own songs, and we stayed there for three years, and Drove everybody crazy. There's right. a movie about us and everything. It was fun. I had a ball. Um, hey, um, I just got a text um, from my uh, manager out, band manager out in Berkeley, um, that was booking the shows in San Fran. He says he's he he called in. He his name is Philip Lawson. Yeah. He's a uh, concept a conceptual artist um, and also was the manager of my band Johnny Fire out in. Uh, Berkeley, California, and and San Francisco. Yep. Yeah. There, there he is. Hey, is this Girl George from the Dragon Show? Yeah, this is Girl George, and there's Johnny Fire. He's on here. How nice. How hey, Johnny Fire. How are you? Hey. Good to hear you. Good to hear you. Yeah, well, I wanted to call in and um, and say hello, and say hello to Girl George, too. I remember the first night that we met her, the, the, your first show in California was in at the Missouri Lounge. And we met Girl George there that night. <laughs> Screaming yep. and yelling, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. It was wonderful. So, anyway, so how? Just like yesterday. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, I remember us walking in. It was the first night you played, and the guy sitting next to me looked over at me, and he says, "He says, where did this guy come from?" Like he couldn't even <laughs> believe what he was hearing. It was beautiful. 
Oh, when and Johnny was, walks in a room, he walks in a room. You notice him. Hey, I mean, it's like just you, you know, aura around Some people him. got it. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. He's, the, he's, he's the real deal. When I, I met Johnny Fire, I guess, when he was about 17. I think I was 19. I was in art school down in Florida, and I heard him play, and his brother was playing, too, at that time. And I knew something really special was happening. And over the years... Uh, the music has only gotten better. Johnny Fire is one of the most uh, prolific uh, songwriters that I've ever met. And that that special thing that I saw that first night is still going strong. It's just getting better every year. I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you mentioned my brother. I, I mentioned my brother, too. His, his name is Matthew Samuel Smith. He also has a record. It's out. Uh, you, call, you can find it on uh, MySpace, The Stardust Plantation. And that's another project I co-produced. And that's more of electronic rock, southern techno rock record, different types of music. Might want to check that out too. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's really really neat to be able to hear you both on the phone actually talking, and we're we're what a what over three thousand miles away from each other. That's that's really kind of cool. Yeah, it's amazing. I I, lo- I love technology. Love it. Yeah, the new hey, technology is say, amazing. You you can make your own records. You can get them all over the world yourself. You don't have to sign with no uh-huh. stupid record company that ain't gonna never do anything. You can do it no, all yourself. I know it, you but can you figure know, out how to do it. Yeah, you know, but you still gotta have. There's still that special talent that a lot of people don't have. I hear a lot of junk get made. But, oh well. You know, if you know, if you know what's going on, you know, because I heard, I heard. Um, I forgot what recordings it was. What, what, what was the one that you and Doug mixed down in a in a hotel room somewhere? You guys, you, yeah, fifteen you minutes. They're gonna probably gear. play that tonight, I think. Okay, listen, that's like that's an amazing song that was that was mixed with good gear. It was mixed in a it was mixed in a hotel room, and it's uh, you know, if you if yes, you got I, the I talent and song. you got the technology. Yeah. You can do it. Well, that's going to be at the end of. See, I make a video out of yeah. this show after we do it tomorrow. I'll put pictures of Johnny on it, and at the end, he's already sent me that song. So that song yeah, will be at the end of this show and the video. That, that's good. Good. Yeah, I, I wrote that, and it was also co-written with my other bass player here and guitarist. His name is Christopher Carter. We and I, him and I, um, both co-wrote that song. And I produced it, and Doug came down from San, from Berkeley to to a uh, warehouse we had here in uh, Tallahassee that we were rehearsing at. He came in and recorded some most of the most of the, the four songs for for this new record, and uh, put he recorded it at the um, at the rehearsal spot, and then we brought it to the Motel Six. <laughs> to get away from from all from from it, it's just everything and right. set the set the motel up like a recording studio. <laughs> Basically, brought uh, upright basses in there, analog gear, guitars from the 1950s, and I just remember when the maids were walking by in the morning, looking in that room and seeing all that gear or what they thought, and there two guys <laughs> sitting at a screen, you know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Morgan's a workaholic for sure. In the in the in the, yeah. in the uh, Doug Morgan from Frank Analog Audio, he's in San Francisco, based out of San Francisco and Sacramento area now. But uh, he's definitely a, an asset to the band when he when when he was on board. That's Everybody go look for Johnny Fire, and his name is Johnny Smith on yeah. uh, on YouTube. You go Thank to, you uh, for Facebook. coming to com. my little show here. Yeah. yeah all. <laughs> yeah. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah. Bye, girl Johnny George. Fire. Bye, Johnny Squire. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. This is Girl Bye-bye. George and the Dragons uh, radio show. Come by again next week for for more exciting, interesting, odd, strange, lovely people. Everybody's crazy but me Everybody's nutty as can be Sell your soul for what you think you need Some call it survival, some call it greed What's a pound of flesh worth today? Go ahead and sell it or give it away Many are stupid or just not
love you like everybody else loves you. I don't want to feel like everybody else feels about you. Why can't you take it?